Wireless radiation is everywhere. We use our smartphones and devices almost everywhere we go. The debate over whether exposure to this radiation affects our health is ongoing. A group called Canadians for Safe Technology says the evidence can no longer be ignored and is urging Health Canada to do more. Joining us is the CEO of Canadians for Safe Technology, Frank Clegg. Thank you for coming in on this. Thank you. you know, so much of this we talk about in a conversation. Oh, it couldn't be good, but we don't. There's a hundred studies that you've looked over and been a part of that say that this is doing us great harm. There's always an ongoing debate about is there enough science to defend and there's reports that say we need more studies, we need more evidence. So we, we put a research team together and came back and identified over 130 studies that Health Canada is, has not taken into account in the last update of the safety guidelines. So the safety guidelines um, are there at a, at, a, at a certain level, Health Canada says that, you know, our research shows that these are perfectly well within the limits of what's safe. Where do we rank in terms of our safety guidelines versus other countries? Well, if you look at the guidelines of China and Russia, Italy and Switzerland, their guidelines are 100 times safer than Canada's. The, the, the guidelines, is, it's the Safety Code 6 is the, is the name of the guideline, and it, it was initially created in 1979, and it hasn't had any major changes in the last several decades. So our view is it's very far behind, it's very out of date, it is not even in the 21st century. So, and of course, back in 1979, we didn't live the way we live today. No. And interesting you say there's been no changes, because Health Canada says it's constantly reviewed. It's on a regular basis, it's reviewed. Reviewing is one thing, there's been no changes. So this here that you brought yes. in is just a condensed form of the, the, the research that's yes. been done that is now in the hands of Health Canada? Well, we submitted it. We, uh, their deadline is on the 15th of July. So yesterday we did a, we presented a draft. But all this is, Bev, is the abstracts from these studies. So okay. all this is is a one-page summary. So there's 139 studies. So if I was to bring in all the studies, each study is anywhere from 10 to 20 pages long. So all we wanted to do was to present, and, and we grew up broken into eight categories, things like cancer, damage, damage to the DNA, uh, fertility impacts, um, uh, of childhood development and learning. So we, we're categorizing by sections and saying to the government, please tell us why you're, you're still saying your guidelines are okay when we've got absolute proof that there's harm. So when, um, uh, let's say, a technician comes in and wires your house, for yes. example, uh, they, they, they set it at a certain level yes. so that you will have access, for example, to wireless and different... Yeah room settings and and that is part of this research as well how that's affecting you in your house absolutely like Wi-Fi in your home one of the things that we say to people is we're not saying don't use the Wi-Fi certainly don't have the Wi-Fi <clears throat> in near your bed near where you study your study or your kids study all day or do homework and turn it off at night so go to Canadian Tire buy a timer that you plug in your lamp and plug your router into that so when you go to bed at night your Wi-Fi is turned off and your body gets a chance to to for, particularly for young children it's growing in an environment or it's not stressed out by the Wi-Fi. Given the fact that you have been part of this research, looking over all of these studies, do you have Wi-Fi in your house? No, I've, I've been in the technology industry all my life, and I've never had Wi-Fi. Because? Well, I just didn't feel it was right. I didn't feel it was safe. And my wife has been very actually forceful about not having that. Now, you can run a, a longer wire. It's a bit annoying. Um, I, don't, I don't have my cell phone. It never put it to my head. I don't put it in my pocket. Uh, we've removed the portable phones from our homes. Uh, baby monitors are another no-no. That's like if I talk to young moms and say, would you put a microwave oven in your, in your ch ch mm. child's bedroom and turn it on all night? Well, of course you wouldn't. Well, the radiation from that baby monitor is actually more than a microwave oven with the door closed. So you would you would say Health Canada can't ignore this? I, I don't. I, I, it's inconceivable to me at this point in the process for them to sit, come out again and say there's no proof. They're, 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 for them to come out and say there's no, we need more evidence. You don't need more evidence. Here's the evidence. We had 50 scientists around the world send a declaration into Health Canada yesterday saying, please, your guidelines do not protect Canadians. Please stop ignoring the science and please change Safety Code Six. Guidelines that date back to 1979, as yes. you pointed out. All yes. right. Well, listen. Thank you so much for coming in to talk about this. We'll be thank following it. Thank you for the invitation.